Andrew, you want to tell me something? Bienvenue à Cannes. Hello everyone. Hope you're having a beautiful day. In this short but unforgettable stay in French Riviera, you will dive into the depth of Cannes culinary treasures. It is, it is time for a seafood, seafood feast. feast. But of course, that's not all. We'll also delve into the rich traditional French cuisine in Escanyon. And of course, not to visit Cannes would be complete without stepping into the famous restaurant where Mr. Elanger and Picasso discussed and created the prestigious Cannes Film Festival. Where is it not? <laughs> we are in Fauville Market and oh my god, I'm really enjoying it. The weather is beautiful, a lot of people. I do feel at home anyways, you know, because there's a lot of food. I'm a chef at the end of the day and this is exactly what I love to do. Anyways, I was a bit bored today and I said let's go have a walk, you know, do something interesting. You have a lot of people. You know, the market, you have the seafood, the vegetables, the spices. And I see something, honestly, in France in general, you can see a lot of dogs with a lot of people in general. For everyone who loves animals, you should pass by to cut. Like, I really like the tomatoes in this country. They look gorgeous. If you like some vegetables, you can always take them home. Okay, make fat touche is always good. Salut tout le monde. Alors, on nous avons la marmande, qui, elle, fait partie des tomates les plus anciennes, euh, qui est très bonne, elle a beaucoup de goût. Elle a un peu de graines, après nous avons la cœur de bœuf rouge qui elle est plus en chair, la cœur de bœuf jaune qui elle qui est beaucoup plus sucrée et la rose de burn qui elle euh, est entre la marmande et la cœur de bœuf. Elle a beaucoup de goût mais elle est rose quoi, c'est la couleur, ça fait joli. <rire> Merci beaucoup. Merci. Réveillé, c'est une spécialité locale. Ça va du sud de l'Italie jusqu'à Marseille, Montpellier. C'est un produit typiquement régional. Donc c'est les fleurs de courgette transformées en beignets. Voilà. Alors vous avez le mâle et la femelle dans ces produits-là. Merci beaucoup, c'est très gentil. Let's see if Cannes does really well those zucchini flowers. Oh my god, they are so crunchy. Lightly salty, but really beautifully done. I guess there is a secret with the batter and that actually makes them so perfect. On a d'abord on amène toujours l'assiette avec les bigorneaux, la mayonnaise et le vinaigre. Et ensuite dans le plateau, c'est le pré royal. Vous avez les huîtres, des bretagnes, des bulots, des prères un crabe et des bulots. Et tu vois, c'est bon, tout est, tout est, tout est rempli. Est, normalement, c'est connu, ça Oui, c'est l'un des plateaux le plus vendu, le royal, c'est le plus complet. Hein dessus, vous avez coquillage, huîtres, crabe, tout est, au moins, tout est, est dessus. Bon. Ouais. Ah, très bon. bon. Très bon, très frais. Les meilleurs plateaux de la région. Merci beaucoup. Merci. So, me and Andrew, we were walking. And I was a bit lost what to eat in Cannes, right? Yeah. So, I asked Andrew, what can you eat? Andrew told me we have to go for a seafood style okay. right? Anyways, have you ever met Andrew, beautiful people? Nope. No. Andrew, tell them about yourself. Well, I'm Andrew. I, uh, I'm a fisherman from Maine, the east coast of the US. We catch lobsters, shrimp, crabs. It, it is, is time for a seafood, seafood feast. feast. The name of the restaurant is Astu and Han. So they've been here apparently from 1950s, three generation already. And when you come to the south of France, what are you gonna do? Eat of course, seafood. seafood. <laughs> yeah. And oh my God, it looks actually beautiful, right? Yeah. yeah. So we have oysters, we have the snails, we have the crab. Let's dig in. Let's dig in. Salud. Cheers. Salud. Cheers, everyone. Marsh with so good. Boom shakalaka. That's really good, right? You can have a lot of flavors, explosion of flavors. It's very fresh, by the way. And what I really like about those ones, they're very meaty, right? They're not too salty. They have a, like a certain balance. The consistency. Beautiful people. If you want to know more about oysters, I've been to Deva and the Emirates, to the farm, to learn everything about oysters. You can find the link in the tap over there. Which one do you think is better, oysters or sea urchin? The sea urchin is good. It's delicious, really, but I personally like the the oysters better. <laughs> get a good, very good impression. Guys, you want to try it? Nope. No one's going to try it. Nobody else is having one? <laughs> oh my god, they, when it comes to sea itches in general, it's always about the love or hate relationship, right? 
Right. So all you love it. Oh, excuse me. Oh, you hate it. Right? <laughs> yeah, they give you a little tiny tip. So those are something I never tried before. Let's see. Wow. I like it better than the urchin. That is delicious. They're very chewy, and the flavor is like mild salty in a certain way, and they're crunchy a little bit, but the flavor is. Really good, actually. And I think those are addictive. You start with one and then you can stop again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call them below because they get them from below. <laughs> That's a good one, right? Didn't try yet the clams. Huh? Almost. They're sweet. They're a lot sweeter than the snails. The south of France, seafood, it's, it's right here. It yeah. comes from here, it hits the table. It doesn't come from far. Shrimp is one of my favorites. All right. Absolute favorites. And these ones here, they're almost like a prawn. They're big. They're great big. They must be from the Atlantic coast. I wouldn't think they're from the Mediterranean. Andrew, you wanted to tell me something. Have another shrimp. <laughs> of course, right? yeah, of course. Have another one. Anyways, let's try them and see how they taste like. The texture of these is amazing too. They really are. Do you know what I like always to do? Right? Perfect combination. A bit of mayonnaise with a crab, and you find that with a bit of lemon. Right? Why not? Perfect combination, right? Good. C'est bon. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, by the way, you know, when you come to Cannes as well, it's really nice to have a walk and, uh, you know, just sit outside, have a glass of white wine. Did you enjoy the lunch, by the way? Did you see what I did to the table? <laughs> it's a massacre. <laughs> I think when you come to Cannes, you have to try Seafood Tower. It is something that you can't miss. But anyways, I'm not sure what's next. What's the next adventure? Let's see. to eat something that is traditional, typical French. So Thomas decided to take me somewhere far and it's been almost an hour we're driving. We're in the small village of Escragnol, all right, which is a small village back in the mountain because yes, you are in the French Riviera for a few weeks. All right. And I just wanted to show you the, the countryside, how it is all right. in the back where you have less people and Really good food. Bonjour Marc, donc euh, aujourd'hui on est dans un restaurant euh, très typique, euh, traditionnel français et euh, c'est vraiment des, des plats qu'on pourrait trouver en fait dans la cuisine de nos grands-mères et euh, la mienne par exemple pourrait euh, fabriquer, euh, cuisiner pardon, ces, ce genre de plats et euh, c'est très goûtu, très généreux et c'est ça la, la cuisine du terroir français quoi. <rire> Beautiful people, by the way, I really want to show you something. This beautiful weather is literally gorgeous. It's incredible. I don't know, look at the mountains, the streets. It reminds me so much in Lebanon. By the way, beautiful people, if you want to watch the vlog, you can find the link in the tab over there. You will definitely enjoy it. Anyways, let's see if the trip was worth it and the food is good. Hello, everybody. A play today, it's a wild boar with red wine sauce. It's served with polenta. After, we have a steak tartare with the French fries. And we have a pentado with a figatelli sauce. I really like the atmosphere. It's very charming. So this is the traditional steak tartare. tartare. Oh my goodness, the dish looks huge. It's massive, it's really incredible. It's so this is the typical French way of making it, right? You have the raw meat, you have the vegetable with it, yes. some cornichons, some capers, the onions. You add always a bit of salt like pepper with it, and you add julep by adding the hot sauce with it, right? Personally, I do like it like this. Some people, they prefer to add some lime on it. All right, perfect. And that's it. And we, basically, we, use it, we eat it with uh, French fries. But oh my God, I'm really impressed by that dish, how huge it is. I, Boom shakalaka. It's really good, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's quite smooth. Meat is lean, doesn't have any fat, but you definitely enjoy it. Oh my god, that's really scary. This is what we say a massive dish. And it's truly 
impressive, by the way. Yes, Mark. This is a typical play, Provencal play that we call la daube. It's a white boar in a sauce that was cooked for 24 hours with red wine and we make it really gravy, a gravy sauce, it's incredible. So this is a dish that comes from the area over here, right? Yes, it's a typical plate from here. It's like all the grandparents, uh, that's what they like to eat. So it's like a bourguignon in a certain way. You have the gravy and then you have the braised beef, right? Yes. And you have some, I saw some carrots inside the dish as well. Exactly, in some way it's really similar plate, but in Provence they really like to cook it with uh, the white boar. Right, perfect. I never tried that one before. I saw it in a lot of menus and it was written beef with it. Yeah. Right, in other places, but here it's with the boar, so that looks really quite interesting to try. It is, and I'm really happy you came here to have the original one. Thomas, you are the king. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautifully braised, by the way. We can add the ponanta with it. In, uh... Bon appetit. Hello. You know, if I really describe these type of dishes that I'm trying, I will definitely call them like as French, traditional, it's you eat, it's a proper lunch, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's consistent, it's flavorful, and it's quite interesting by the way. Mark, ça c'est de la pantade. It's a kind of like <laughs> massive. Anyway, so where is it, what is it exactly? Alors de la pointe ça ressemble beaucoup à, à du poulet en fait et donc sur la saveur et la texture c'est un peu sec mais mm. c'est euh, bien préparé avec de la sauce ce qui fait que c'est très goûtu mm. et euh, le goût est très agréable. Donc ça aussi c'est un plat qui est traditionnel français. Euh, c'est euh, en effet ça fait partie des plats euh, qu'on peut cuisiner en France. On peut choisir entre les pâtes ou la polenta ou les pommes de terre par exemple avec ce plat ou ça vient toujours avec les pâtes euh, Oui on peut choisir euh, différents euh, accompagnements mais c'est vrai qu'avec des tagliatelles euh, c'est sympathique. Uh, what was the name of the chicken again De la pintade. De la pintade, I love it. It's like, <laughs> I love the way, the way you pronounce it by the way, pintade. Commencez. It's very good. <laughs> the chicken is beautifully braised with the pasta on the side. I think both combinations are good, but it's a good dish. And again, but my favorite was actually the la daube. Ah, oui, that was like the top of the top. Yeah, that was really good. Okay. Anyways, beautiful people. Thomas, thank you very much. Muchas gracias, hermano. Très gentil. Merci beaucoup. I'm not sure what's next. They sell so much food to be discovered in the area. Let's see. Hello, I am Sophie from Dabuto family. You are in the oldest restaurant in Cannes since uh, 1860. Movie festival was created. The idea was created in this restaurant with Mr. Picasso, who are a very good friend of my grandfather, Mr. Herlinger, Mr. Cocteau, and they have uh, an idea to uh, realize this uh, incredible uh, festival in Europe, the great, great, great uh, movie festival in Cannes. Andrew is my date, <laughs> again, because no one really wanted to go out with me. But anyways, we were searching to have dinner in a French restaurant. So we landed in Dabuto Auberge Provençale. It's actually the oldest restaurant in Cannes. So it is open since 1860. Oh my God, my dad was not born right, right? My grandfather no. maybe, my grandfather, that's crazy. <laughs> Bonsoir, bienvenue chez nous à l'Aubert Provençal ce soir. Pousse l'assiette Tony. Vous allez manger pastilla de chèvre. Préparé par mon seconde en entrée. Hommage de chèvre, hommage de figue et oignon confit. Mon grand chef qui est à côté va vous faire un merlu, petit poisson poché avec des petits cocos maison. Comme vous voyez, tous les produits sont des produits frais et élaborés chez nous. Et en plus, pour nos petits clients privilégiés, bruschetta de légumes frais à la cheminée et mozzarella. 
Et je vous souhaite surtout un très très bon appétit. Thank you. And uh, apparently they have a really nice salad, which is called pastilla de chèvre frais, salade de saison, which is basically filo pastry, goat cheese, caramelized yeah. onion, and as I can see, some balsamic reduction and a bit of rucola. Oh my God! Look at the crunchiness when you slice it. Oh my god, it's delicious. The onions, the balsamic, and the goat cheese. Right, right, right. And the crunch of the phyllo. Yeah, yeah, that's really it's sweet. Good. It's crunchy, it's salty, it's sweet. You know, this is the entire combination that made basically the perfect bite for the perfect thing. Really it's refreshing as well. You have a nice salad below. Truly really perfection, beautiful people. I can't stop myself. <laughs> All the celebrities that you know have been here, right? Like who, for example? George Clooney is on the wall. Bruce uh, Willis. Bruce Willis. John Travolta. Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. Everybody. All of them. Now there's, there's, there's also pictures us, right? All, that's right. <laughs> that's right. What's happened with the dish? It's gone. Where is it gone? <laughs> When you go to a restaurant, food is very important, of course, for me, definitely, right? But I think it's always about the entire package that comes with it. This street that we're on blows my mind. The first time I went up and down it, it is what you think of France. Little, tiny street, hill, restaurants up and down it. It's cool. With fire, cooked their chicken. We have ratatouille on the side, we have a bit of sauce potatoes and a bit of butter as well. Anyways, the chicken looks beautifully cooked. Very simple presentation. But anyways, I'm really curious what about the flavor. Grab that one. Wow. It is really tender. <laughs> it's not like, dry at all. It is the temperature, the cooking temperature is really perfectly done, right? It's absolutely beautifully done. Oh my god. I know in France they have a lot of really great products when it comes to chicken, to cheese, they're one of the best breads. Anyways, it's quite quite really interesting. Anyways, I want to try as well. Gatatou, which is French, really popular, everyone knows about it. Very simple but really beautifully done. Do you know a lot of people always ask me what is the secret to make a beautiful tender chicken? Do you know the secret? No, no I don't. Some people they say you should add yogurt, you add lemon, you add vinegar. It's true, they all make actually the chicken looking tender. But the entire secret is basically in the chicken. It's the quality of the chicken. Oh, it's the point? chicken. So for a chef, for example, we always go to the markets, we go with the suppliers, we get the chicken, we try them before, and then we see how tender it is. It's always about getting the chicken tender itself. You get my points? It's the produce where the chicken eats, and this is very, very important when it comes to have a great chicken. Second of all, what I really love when making a chicken is basically on charcoal. This is also another another secret. Making it on the grill, on a pan, it's never going to give you the same flavor. Yeah, that's why. I give you this, this beautiful charred type of flavor, which is really, really exceptional. This, the skin gets that little bit of crispiness. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> it makes it pop up. So the last dish we decided to go for a hackfish with some uh, white beans and then we have a lemon butter sauce on the top, right? Yeah. Very simple, straightforward, basically a fish dish. Hakes a lot like a haddock. Traditional. Very simple. Fish is flaky, classical. Not, nothing really that impressive. Now it is the time to have finally a dessert, but I can't eat anymore, by the way. I can. <laughs> you can always <laughs> eat. Andrew, it's incredible how much you eat, really, and you never gain weight. That's incredible. Show it's them a this gift. expense it's that a you gift. have. He shows us the six pens that you have. We're going to have Eclair au chocolat Valrona with matcha ice cream. Boom. Yeah, right? it's smooth. The chocolate is so smooth. With the matcha, give you like, like the matcha is very refreshing at the same time, right? So both combinations are truly perfect because you have some sweet and the matcha is a bit better. Complement the dish perfectly. The atmosphere 
the waiters be bopping around. Yeah, the entire country, exactly. They're real characters. It's, it, it's quite a fun. Beautiful people. I really hope that uh, you enjoyed the trip in Cannes. That was absolutely wonderful. There was a lot of discoveries. And what can I tell you? At the end of the day, Cannes is truly a city. It's lively. You have a lot of food, a lot of things to discover. It's nice to walk at night. It have history. Safe. If you come to Cannes, now you know exactly what to do. We'll see you very soon. Of course, do not forget to subscribe. A très bientôt. <laughs> bye Ciao. bye.